In northern Arizona and New Mexico, the Anasazi were also prospering a thousand years ago. The ancient dwelling and remains of the Anasazi are much better preserved than those of the Hohokam, since they were built with stone. Near their buildings, rock paintings, pictographs, remind us of their early history. The earliest Anasazi were wanderers, living off of what the land would provide in plants and game animals. Eventually, they learned to grow their own food. This diorama illustrates a later development of Anasazi culture, when small settlements appeared around their fields. These first dwellings, partly underground and covered with poles and mud, were called pit houses. In the cold winter months, some of the Anasazi lived in high, dry caves, which can be seen in northern Arizona. In these caves and rock shelters, they built stone-lined pits. Remnants of centuries-old crops tell us these were used for food storage. Centuries later, as the Anasazi population increased, the people began living together in larger and larger settlements. These long, one-storied buildings made of adobe were the beginning of the true Pueblo culture. During the next three or four hundred years, the Anasazi culture flourished. Pueblos of stone soon replaced those of mud. Some were built on the high mesa tops. Some were built on the canyon floors. Many were built in huge caves, entered only by hand and toe holds cut into the sandstone cliffs. Why do they build in such inaccessible places? Some believe it was for protection from raiding Indians who had come into Anasazi country. Others believe it was to conserve farming land for a much larger population. We can only guess. <laughs> 